Hey everybody, this is Prisoner830506 reporting from my prison cell at Facility 5, a private contract prison. And this is my weekly update to YouTube that covers the daily updates. I post videos every single day updating, you know, Patreons at, uh, patrons at patreon.com slash facility5 on my everyday imprisonment at Facility 5. Um, new videos every day, all that stuff. So what you're seeing here is just a small clip of the video that I actually posted on Patreon.com. Um, the audio on these are cut out because these are actually clips from the daily videos that I posted on Patreon. So I'm actually talking through these videos so you don't hear my chains or anything like that, unfortunately. If you like hearing the chains. <laughs> I'm always permanent. These shackles never come off, so every video I'm chained. And if you want to hear those sound effects and get the full effect, you'll just need to go to patreon.com slash facility five and watch the daily videos. Um, but because I'm just copying these, and I'm just dragging all the daily videos that are covered in this vlog and I'm cutting them up and turning off the audio for them. So, um, and just a reminder, I'm I'm really a prisoner. I have to pay for my imprisonment here because it's a private contract prison, like I mentioned in the beginning. And um, I'm going to run out of time. Like, there's, I can't stay here forever, right? I, pay, I put all my savings into the sentence that I have already. And when that runs out, I get kicked out of my prison cell. I get kicked out of my home because I live in this prison cell. This cell is my house, right? And um, I don't want to get evicted from my prison cell. I don't want to be homeless which is probably what's gonna happen since my girlfriend stole my house and uh, says I'm not moving back in. Um, so I'm pretty desperate at this point. I need outside help. Um, I'm not getting enough to, to really sustain my imprisonment right now, but if I can get enough people to sign up while I'm already, you know, I have time, then at least that adds up and it extends my imprisonment. Every cent that goes to Patreon goes towards my, what they call, um, persistent sentencing fund, which goes into that account, it cannot be removed. As soon as it goes in, it automatically extends my imprisonment, my sentence, and it can't be undone. I have to serve that time. So every time you subscribe to Patreon, you are owning a piece of my freedom. You own my prison imprisonment. Okay. So there's that. You get more videos because I'm still in prison and I can still make videos. Um, if I get evicted from prison, I'm closing this channel because I'm, I gotta go get a job. I gotta fucking get an apartment probably. I mean, there's just, I'm gonna have a real life again and I, I'm not gonna have time for this. Plus I don't want to carry this over into my real life. You know, there's a reason that I'm trying to stay anonymous in these and stuff because eventually these feet are gonna have shoes on them and probably working at some stupid job, right? and their shackles aren't gonna be there, right? So I'm just gonna be, to that point, I'm just probably gonna close everything down, erase, you know, shut down my page, shut down everything so that, you know, when I am working this nine to five job, that one of my coworkers doesn't say, hey, I saw your videos last night, you know, you were in prison, you know, I don't want that being dragged into my everyday life. So as long as I'm locked up, feet every day, <laughs> shackles every day. As soon as I get evicted from prison, none of that. It's all going to go away. So if you like these kinds of videos and you want to continue seeing me chained up and imprisoned, patreon.com slash facility5. So this week has been very eventful, and I'm just going over it just from memory. And to be honest, I'm a little ahead on my vlogs. I did a bunch of videos on 63, a prisoner that I was chained to in consolidated confinement for nine days during my three months of consolidated confinement back in the day. Um, I became obsessed with him, so I made a ton of videos about his feet, about his backstory, which is very interesting. It's all verifiable. I mean, well, not all of it. A good portion of it is verifiable. Like, he said that his, he was had been enslaved. He had... Um, permanent wrist shackles and ankle shackles and they were wide like the ones I'm wearing maybe even a little wider because and then he was he said that his master made him work he had to stay naked the whole time and he was made to work outdoors so he had a full body tan it had faded he said he he'd already been in consolidated confinement for seven months when I met him um so you know no sunlight for seven months his tan had faded quite a bit but you could still see clear white marks around his wrists and ankles from the shackles that he wore while he was naked working outside. And the soles of his feet are the thickest and toughest 
that I've ever touched, right? They're really thick and across the entire soles of his feet. Um, from working in gravel and, and rocks and stuff, he, he said he had to move rocks from one side of the property to the other all day long in chains, naked, with bare feet, right? So um, he's he's has a lot that proves his backstory. So it was really interesting. And I got obsessed with him when I saw a picture of a girl's feet on the PCN. The media channel was posting, prisoners were posting pictures of their feet with the, the Halloween tattoos. And it triggered me. Like her feet looked exactly like kids do from the tops. And he's got really cute feet. Um, and so anyway, I was freaking out because I really wanted to get a hold of him. I wanted to do PPV with him. I wanted those feet on me again, like they were in consolidated confinement. And I finally got a hold of him. So it turns out that the reason I couldn't reach him is because he was on PPV with another prisoner. And it's just rude to go to another prisoner's cell and then ignore them and hang out with your friends on the PCN, the Prison Community Network. So he doesn't, right? And Seven does the same thing when he's in my cell. He doesn't hang out on the PCN. Um, so uh, I was su super excited. I mean, it's like a girl that you have a crush on for a year. She doesn't even know who you are. Never said one word to you, doesn't know your name. And you've built her up in your mind like to be a goddess and then suddenly she speaks to you that's how i felt when he finally said hey what's up who's this <laughs> he didn't even remember me <clears throat> um right at first he didn't memorize my prisoner id but once i told him the my backstory and stuff and and you know to refresh his memory he remembered me to the point where he even asked how my girlfriend was doing which is my ex-girlfriend now um, so we hit it off. Um, we, we were sending pictures back and forth. We went into a video chat um, and I didn't, wasn't really satisfied with the video chat at first because I wasn't able to see his feet. It's a front facing camera on his tablet. But then he propped out the, the tablet on the pillow because he was sick of holding it. Didn't even ask him to do this. He propped it on the pill, uh, against the pillow on his, the head of his top bunk. And he sat at the foot of his bunk with his, the soles of his adorable bare feet facing the front facing camera. And at that point forward, I said, this is the view you have to do from now on. Unfortunately, because of his owner, he has, he's mandatory nudity, right? So he cannot wear anything but his chains. He's naked 24 seven throughout and his entire imprisonment, he has to stay naked. Um, and this was a little awkward at first because I, you know, I've seen plenty of naked prisoners in here in chains in consolidated confinement, but I don't know, just it 24 hours a day. Yeah, you know, I mean, it just I, I would rather him be wearing clothes. I'm straight, he's gay, so he asked if I would go naked on video, right? So I've been naked in my cell since then because whatever the mouth attached to those adorable bare feet says they get right i'm i'm obsessed with his feet and i'll do anything those feet tell me to do um so i've been naked in my cell um completely naked except for my chains which are welded around my ankles they're permanent they don't come off um and the suspension chain that goes around my waist that's bolted on that doesn't come off um and we're doing this video chat stuff so um we decide we want to do pvv that's him visiting my prison cell and uh, we plan on that. He can't do it right away because you know, there's apparently there's a 24 hour period where you have to be in your own cell before you can go out on another PPV. So we waited for that time and we're both standing barefoot on our footprint authentication panels and he's punching in my prisoner ID in his cell to, to request PPV in my cell and I'm standing on the panel ready to hit the, the accept button and it doesn't come through. Then he messaged me and says, every time I punch in your prisoner ID, it's coming up restricted prisoner. And I'm just like, that's code 76. It's the same code that 7 got earlier this week. And I'm not sure if that was in the last vlog or not. He came to my cell to record video of my feet because during my counseling, I went through counseling uh, because I was obsessed with his feet. And also I was going through consolidated confinement withdrawals. She pulled me off of uh, mandatory labor. Um, so I don't have to go to mandatory labor anymore. So the filthy bare feet you're seeing right now are actually clean for the most part. They're still stained along my footprints. And it's going to take a long time for that to wear off. But um, you'll see that later next videos. You'll see that I have clean feet. But um, she removed me from mandatory labor. So I'm not leave I'm locked in my cell 24 hours a day now. And she put me on restriction. So I can't have any PPV. This is all part of my therapy to get me... Um, to get me uh, 
uh, over my consolidated confinement withdrawals, which he would definitely, he's consolidated confinement right now. He, if he was in my cell, it would be better than consolidated confinement. And then I would never get over it, right? So, um, and that was part of our reasoning is that when seven was in my cell, it extended it and actually probably made it stronger, right? So that's why I'm having such hard uh, consolidated confinement withdrawals right now. So restricted, so no video, no, uh, uh, time with him in my cell. And I made a video of me basically crying through the whole thing. I was not crying out loud, but like on the verge, the whole freaking video. And I've posted a video that was very self-destructive. It was the camera through the bars of my cell. So you could see the bars of my cell door in the shot and my feet behind them which is a complete violation. I'm not allowed to have the, the camera outside, but that was my goal. I was gonna do this crybaby video showing that I'm openly violating legal rules and I was planning on going to consolidate confinement for a long period of time. If I can't have his feet on me, at least that my feet can be chained to the feet of two other prisoners and I can have their feet on me, right? Right. And I was like going to this rebellious stage and um, I changed that video. So. It's already been, it was like the third or fourth video where I'm standing on the footprint of the education panel. I moved the camera inside the cell and took another video. And I changed the audio from the crybaby bullshit to just explaining what happened in a, in a calm, you know, manner. Um, so anyway, um, my girlfriend was notified by counseling, by my counselor about me, you know, my situation. My ex-girlfriend owns me. She's my legal guardian. As far as law goes, I can't even sign my name to anything without her co-signature. So she owns me. And so when something happens in the prison that involves me, she gets notified. She's moved on. She's got her little slave girl that she got from her previous job that was, you know, she was, the girl was desperate. She needed a place to live. Um, her boyfriend was abusive. The roommate situation. Well, anyway, so she, uh, basically agreed to be enslaved by my girlfriend not to she doesn't have to work she doesn't have to pay rent she just has to be a little slave girl at home and we're wearing my shackles wearing uh, and under the contract that I wrote for me and my girlfriend my ex-girl well she was my girlfriend at the time so she's moved on she's not even paying attention to me anymore she's still maintaining my imprisonment because she's under contract and she she sticks with her contracts but she's, as far as emotionally attached, we're not. You know, we, every time we talk, we fight. You know, so there's really no point in talking to her. Um, so she contacts, so she pulls up my video because all the third party, uh, third parties have video access to our cell. So they can see us locked up in here, right? 24 hours a day. So she, she can stream my life in this prison cell. And she pulls it up and sees that I'm naked and that I'm talking to someone on a video chat naked. So she's like, hmm, what's going on here? So she contacts me and says, what's going on here? And I told her about 63, how he's not allowed to wear clothes. It's part of, you know, he'll go to the dungeon if he wears any clothes. Like if he comes to my cell and I give him my shirt, he goes to the dungeon. I could go to the dungeon for giving him my shirt, knowing that that's against the rules. So she got really excited. First of all, she wants me to turn gay. That's the reason I broke up with her, because she deliberately betrayed me, lied, said she's been trying to get me out of consolidated confinement. In fact, she was keeping me in consolidated confinement for that three months. So we broke up because of that. And she, her reasoning is that she wants me to be bisexual like her. Like she wants me to expand my, my horizons. Um, so when she knew that I was naked, video chatting a gay prisoner and wanted him in my cell, she got really excited. She said, I'm putting you on mandatory nudity, so you're not allowed to wear clothes anymore, and I'm putting this through the, the prison, so you'll go to the dungeon if you wear clothes. And I fought back. I was like, you know, we got in a fight over it. And I'm like, no, because that goes against our contract. Our contract um, is with, our personal contract is to promote the creation of this vlog and uh, eventually um, show, uh, do the, the prisoner interviews. And that would go against that because I won't be able to do a lot of things if I'm completely naked, right? Like I won't be able to stand on the footprint authentication panel because you'll see right up at my naked junk, right? I can't sit on the bunk where I was going to originally do the, uh, the interviews where we're going to sit opposite each other with our feet in the middle and the camera's pointing, I'm going to have to get another camera, but the camera would be pointing at, you know, cross, cross shot at both of us and I can't be naked like that, right? So she says, okay, well, I'm not gonna make it mandatory in the prison, but you cannot wear clothes anymore from now on. 
um, only when absolutely required. And this includes leaving my cell. So the next time I meet with um, Jess, I have to go naked. And the video you're seeing right now is me completely naked um, from the... It's showing a little bit too much. I, I made me worried about this video when I was originally making, originally uh, putting voice to it. I was really kind of watching my crotch to make sure nothing was showing because I'd get in trouble. But as you can see, my feet are getting cleaner in this video. You can tell that there's pink areas, you know, but there's still the, the brown. The, the dark areas are actually dirt that my feet are picking up from the floor of my cell, my prison cell, because I've tracked a lot of the stain onto the floor in my cell. So when I get out of the shower, I'm walking barefoot with wet feet on a f dirty floor, right? And you'll see these little plastic things stuck to my feet. That's from mandatory labor because they shred plastic in there uh, before it's processed or whatever, or that's actually the processing. And those little pieces of plastic, they get everywhere and I track them into my cell. So, and since they don't biodegrade, I'm gonna have little plastic things stuck to the soles of my feet forever now. Um, I try to brush my feet off, but sometimes they just stick to my, the soles of my feet. So anyway, you can also see now my ankles and you can see the marks that my ankles have on my right ankle. You can see the mark at the top above the ankle and the mark below, you know, where the ankle, the shackle rests. And this is like 24 hours a day because these shackles are permanent. They're uh, oval shaped. So they make lines around my entire ankles. You can see on my left ankle. Um, how it goes all the way around. And this is the back of my ankle. The fronts of my ankles have it. Um, it's it's permanent because even this is after I woke up too. And that's probably why the top of my ankle is, is more marked because, you know, I'm pulling my chain tight and stuff while I'm sleeping and it pulls the shackle up and makes that top ring around my ankles. Um, but anyway, that's this video. Um, there's a bunch more. Believe me, I've skipped a bunch of stuff. So... If you want to have the whole story, you want to get a, an idea of my everyday imprisonment, because um, I'm posting a video every single day with new videos just like this, um, but lo much longer, not just clips. And you know, I'm cutting these videos down, so you're missing a lot of the video part too, uh, not just the story part. Um, but the uh, I, I post uh, pictures there um, when I was searching for uh, 63's uh, feet that look like 63's feet. Um, I posted a bunch of pictures on Patreon to show the patrons, you know, what his feet look like before, you know, because I can't show his feet even now that we're in contact because um, of the rules in the prison. But I posted pictures of feet that were very similar to his that I found on the Internet. Um, I've been in communication. There's a lot of community going there, people asking questions and me answering them. It's it's a lot of fun and it's like five dollars so if you have any interest in this at all this imprisonment it's practically nothing right um so go over there patreon.com slash facility five you'll be extending my imprisonment and getting what you came here to see anyway so um again if i get evicted everything goes away so i'm just telling you um there's upgrades too you can get the asmr videos I'm, I'm posting two of those a week now originally it was just a weekly thing but from now on there's going to be a i think i chose saturday and wednesday that these asmr videos and basically the videos that, that i post every day but without me talking over them so you can hear the chains you can hear the sounds of prison you know which is it's pretty quiet in here. You basically, you just hear the, the fan going most of the time, but that's part of the ASMR experience, right? Whatever that hell that means. <laughs> it's just popular on YouTube. Uh, but anyway, um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow on Patreon or next week on YouTube. And uh, thanks for watching.